we this week we had moved it uh, to Wednesday and we'll be in the library. Okay. Domino players, both groups? Both groups. All right, Wednesday in the domino. Some of you may leave the dominoes and go across the hall to Bible study, but that's that's your choices. But they'll be meeting Wednesday instead of Thursday, and and you'll be meeting. You're gonna meet on Wednesday. Yeah. All right, because you're not because of the parking scenario, because we had buses here last time, so we'll have buses here this time. They were parked across the street, but anyway. And. Put us in the mood for worship, please. stand for the entry of the light and remain standing for our affirmation of our Christian faith. Would you please join with me for our affirmation by Christian faith, which is printed in the bulletin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He is sitting in heaven, and sitting at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please stand as you are able for our opening hymn. Number 140, Great is Thy Faithfulness, verses 1 and 3.
open your hearts and mind as we set forth. Thank you for this day, dear Lord. Thank you for being able to see and to hear this morning. We're blessed because you are a forgiving and understanding God. You have done so much for us and continue to bless us. Forgive us for all we have done that was not pleasing to you. Help us make the best of every day and help us to accept all things we have no control over, trusting that you will bring the good out of all the situations. Continue to use us to do your will. Keep us strong so that we may be able to help the weak. We pray for each and every family member that love and joy are in their homes and that their needs are met. We pray for peace with each other and in all the world. Bless the families of the military who have lost loved ones this past week. We ask all of this in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We we'll now listen to the anthem. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, verses 1 and 3. Don't you like to trust him? What? I said, don't you love to trust him?
scripture is found in Mark 9, 2 through 13. Six days later, Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up on high on the mountain to be alone. As the men watched, Jesus' appearance was transformed, and his clothes became dazzling white, far whiter than any earthly priest could ever make them. Then Elijah and Moses appeared and began talking to Jesus. Peter exclaimed, Rabbi, it's wonderful for us to be here. Let's make three shelters as memorials, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He said this because he didn't really know what else to say, for they were all terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my dearly beloved son. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, Moses and Elijah were gone, and they saw only Jesus with them. As they went back down on the mountain, he told them not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept it to themselves, but they often asked each other what he meant by rising from the dead. Then they asked him, why do the teachers of religious law insist that Elijah must return before the Messiah comes? Jesus responded, Elijah is indeed coming first to get everything ready. Yet why do the scriptures say that the Son of Man must suffer, suffer greatly and be treated with utter contempt? But I tell you, Elijah has already come, and they chose to abuse him just as the scriptures predicted. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God. As you notice, my mother didn't make my middle name Grace. <laughs> Y'all saw my disaster over here a while ago. I don't know about you in this these plastic bottles. I'm very careful, some I won't buy. I recently got one out of the refrigerator kitchen earlier, and guess what? It has thin skinner than mine, thinner than mine, and it just crumpled, <laughs> and it didn't go I have a mess. But anyway, at least it didn't get on my sermon notes. Came close, but not too much. But close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades, right? Mountaintop moment. You ever had one? Joy and I have. All of us mostly have climbed Pinnacle, right? And we've been up to the top of that. And I don't know what kind of experience you had there. But some years back, Joy and I were up on Magazine. Well, my family used to come up and we'd be up there all the time. But anyway, this was us. It was after the lodge was been built there. And we were up on the mountain and we went hiking and we went up to Signal Hill. I don't know if you've ever been to Signal Hill. Signal Hill has a, a plaque there that's the highest point between the Alleghenies and the Rocky Mountains of the United States. I don't know if it's nice to be there. But the experience we had there was while we were there, all of a sudden this beautiful blue butterfly came and lived right by us. Well, that's the Arkansas and it's called Diana Frigitale, and uh, it's a it's it's common for us. The females are blue, and the males have are, are sort of yellowish orange. Beautiful uh, flowers. And we thought, well, that's a nice experience to be here up on the mountain, seeing all of this. So that evening, we were, we had a, a nice uh, balcony that we got to look out of, and we got to sit there and watch one of the most beautiful meteor showers you ever want to see. I mean, they just, we were out there where there was no lights except the meteors flying across and we had to go up from that. That was, a, that was to us a mountain moment. But then I got to thinking about some of the mountain moments. Uh, and as I was talking with Darcy earlier, one of the first things that came to my mind was a picture that was taken from Apollo 11 as it came around over the moon and there was the earth. This, blue orbs sticking in absolute darkness, black behind them. 
And to me, that just put goose flesh, just to think about it. So I got to thinking about that, and then a guy by the name of Frank White has written a book called Overview Effect. In other words, the effect is overview of what you think is bigger than you think. And this is what a number of the astronauts experience on their birth, their, their trips around the moon, or out to the moon and back, and so, and they were the of it. This overview effect occurs. That's what sort of happened with Joy and I on the mountain. It was overview. But the, the experience for those astronauts really and truly transformed their concept of humanity as well as the realm of infinity. They realized how insignificant or small they were in the midst of it and what they were in the middle of. But he quoted it, one of the astronauts said it was beyond words in that moment. One of them said, it really does look like this really beautiful oasis out in the middle of nothingness. It's the oasis against the backdrop of infinity. This enormous universe behind it. Can you imagine what seemed good? Another one, Edward Mitchell said, there was starting, there was startling re recognition that the nature of the universe was not what I had been taught. You got a new concept. I not only saw the connectedness, I felt it. In other words, he felt the connectedness with all of that. I was overwhelmed with a situation physically and mentally extending out into the cosmos. Can you imagine? I thought about it. Y'all remember the uh, Captain Kirk, right? William Shatner. Did you realize that he got a trip on one of the rocket ships here not too long ago? He was 91 years old when he got it. And he was, it was his first time to really be in space. And he was amazed at it. He says, I could not overcome the power of our beautiful, mysterious, collective human entitlement, um, our enlightenment, in, in entanglement, excuse me, all tangled together in his life. He saw this. It was a new one. And thinking about it. So what I'm asking is if they were able to step outside the, of their box. And that's where we are today. This is what Jesus is asking us to do. Can you imagine what just happened to Peter, James, and John? Can you imagine being on the mountain with Christ and all of a sudden you have this fabulous overview effect moment in your life? And then, there they were. Here they were, all of them. And they were absolutely beyond themselves. And as precious and as tiny as our little planet appears, suspended in the sky, in the darkness, and in the blackness behind it, in the silent void of space. As vast as the universe looks in its infinite, infinite horizon. And now that we have the Webb's telescope, we're seeing things we hadn't seen before. And as we have more knowledge, God gives us ability to see that and understand it. But in the midst of all of that, when you look at that, you think of the, the dichotomy there of the extraordinary and transcendent nature of God, the creator of all of this. And you see well, what's going on there. You know, when you think about it, what a solitary, beautiful gift from God we all are. All of us are. Just imagining, I keep hearing that song, I can only imagine. <laughs> but think about it, imagining, you know, just the image of it. As I was speaking with Darcy, I get filled with awe when I see these marvelous pictures of it. Now, I, I, just, I pulled up, I have a whole stack of pictures that were actually taken from the moon. And I pulled them out the other day and had to look at them. I saw the first footprint, you know, and all of this, I have them. And I'm sitting there wondering, you know, we've been able to do this. We've been able to leave this little blue globe in the darkness out there and travel 250,000 miles out of it, around the moon, walked on the moon. Can you imagine? When we think of that, think, think of what's been created in our life. I, every time I think of it, I think of the Sistine Chapel and what Michelangelo painted on the ceiling. Do you realize 
that those people were there were sort of like, you know, Michelangelo painted man's finger and God's finger on the ceiling. They're almost touching. And that's where you are in your mountain moment. You're, you're touching God in all of this. You know, you feel it and it's there when you get So you have that. It's this ecstatic encounter that you and I have on our mountain top moment in our life. You know, think about it. The marvelous thing is we sing all this, we're not alone. We think at times we're alone. Oh, I, mean, I like sitting out on my deck and looking at the stars and trying to see. Darcy got to see the horse's head and it's, it, it's in Orion. That's one of the nebulas and with her telescope. And I, you know, you think about that. God created all of this. The end is there. We're finding it. And so if God's lovingly created us and in this one of a kind extinct world, when you look at our, our universe and our solar system, we're the only ones that has all of this, all right? From everything we've got and from all the probes that we've looked. I don't know about you, but I enjoyed watching the probes on Mars, don't you? The helicopter doesn't work anymore, but that's all right. If we get to see what's there, there's no life there. But this one is specific. This one little blue planet, the third rock from the sun. You know, we as human beings have really and truly we become overwhelming with the beauty of it all. It's hard for us to grasp. We have to appreciate it. We have to appreciate the rationalization that comes from the beginning of time. Can, can you imagine what's transpired? Can you imagine? The universe is still expanding. It's not shrinking. It's expanding in all of this. And it's for it's happened with us. Think of how much has occurred in our lifetimes. What's transpired. Right? As I wrote in one of my blogs, I, or at least I was thinking about it, I don't know if I meant nothing about it or not. But can you imagine what's gone on in our lifetime? You remember 1969? You remember the president in 1966 said before the end of the century, or before the end of the decade, we will walk on the moon? We did it, didn't we? The simple fact being is, the idea was put there. Where did the idea come from? You gotta realize, God is instructing all of us in all the things that we're doing. He's in the midst of it all. We, we get to thinking about experiences. Do you realize what happened with Moses? You remember reading about Moses after his visit with God, he came back and his face was, was lit up, you know? Right? Or you get to thinking about the, from the mountain, you, from that mountain, <coughs> excuse me, you think of Jacob's ladder, the stairway to the, to the heavens, or Ezekiel's vision that we read about. These are occurrences. Or even, do you realize Paul's encounter you really, you've read about it. You know that God zapped him on the road to Damascus and Jesus says, why are you doing this to me? But did you really realize the power that occurred and happened to poor old Paul in that moment? The brightness of that light was so bright and so powerful, it blew him off his horse. Think of that force. That's hard for us to grasp and put our minds around it, but that's what happens. It was in this kind of, brilliant light, white light signals to us a God moment in our lives. We have those. I don't know where you've had your moments, but I have. Joy and I have together. One of the moments was, have you ever seen Mount Denali? We used to call it McKinley, right? They named it back to Denali. Have you ever seen it on a bright day? John and I were there, and the rangers were even there, and they were taking pictures. And I said, what are y'all doing? He said, this is one of only six days this whole year, and they're getting ready to close down the season there, that we've been able to see Mount Denali. Think about that. That with them was a top of the mountain moment. It was a top of the mountain moment for us to be able to see this. We have those in our lives. How many of you, when you looked at your firstborn child, Talk about a top of the moment, a mountain moment. And you look at it thinking, Lord, from me? Thank you. You know, we have those kind of moments in our lives. And these mountaintop moments are times when really, when our reality pauses and God breaks through with such an energy and with such power and unexpected glory that we have. Joy and I love to watch movies. Y'all like to watch movies? 
But we pick up now, we don't really care what the story is. We take them for the fact of the scenery that we're getting to see and the gloriousness of it all. We saw one uh, last night that we got to see Finland. We got to see uh, Scotland. We got to see uh, French Polynesia. We got all of these places. And I look at that and I think, wow, God has given us this moment in our lives. And we get to watch that and see it and experience it. The marvelous thing is when you look around it, you realize God is real. I mean, he can tell you all the things you want to. You heard the scripture being read where Christ says that people were going against him. That's going against him today. If you think it was happening in the first century, think about the 21st century. How many people have turned on the Jewish people today, as a matter of fact? Think about the Christian church that's been turned on. But guess what? God isn't through yet. That's the marvelous thing about it. If you think about it, we human beings live in a kind of constructed environment for us to live in. Do you realize what's together on this earth for us to be able to live and survive in this? When we think on it, you know, we have ability to, to make meaning out of things. We have the ability for our brains to function in ways. And even if we have to take CBD, it works pretty good, I guess. But those things are there. It makes sense. You know, we live by our senses. We understand through what our brain literally can absorb and categorize everything in it. Can you imagine all of the marvelous sensory stimuli that our bodies are able to have and consume and do? You know, we humans are also gifted with a unique ability to absolutely imagine infinite and to understand our limitations, how far we are. See, God says you can go this far, but when you're able to do that, I will give you the knowledge and the wisdom to even go further. That's what's happening in our lives. That's what happens in our Christian faith. That's where we are today. And this ability to trust the existence of God being in our lives, the truth, you know, this truth that lies beyond our comprehension. You realize what happens in there? We have to have faith in that. Our faith, we can't see it. You know, I like the fact being is I can't see an electron. But we have found out that they do occur. And we do find out how they work and how they think about it. But we also wonder, how did that come about? It came about because there was a mind far more masterful than ours. You know, we have a great capacity of faith. That's one of the marvelous things God has put into our DNA is the fact that we have the ability to have faith. And the beauty of God's human creation is our ability to be in an intimate and loving relationship with God. It's important for us. That's why we're here. You see, with God whom we cannot see. Have you seen God? I've seen his results, but I've never seen him. Have you ever seen the wind? No, but I've seen the results of the wind. Have you ever, you know, think about those kind of things. You have to embracing the mystery allows us to have that kind of overview effect that can transform all of us in a rather astounding way. Such is the mystery and the beauty of faith. We don't see it, but we do feel it, and it's part of it. In our scripture today, as you heard Goldie read, we see these Jesus' disciples, and I, I love to put myself between the lines and try to look between the, the letters and the words to see what really is going on, because if you ever read Hebrew, that's what you gotta do. But I get to thinking about, can you imagine what Peter, James, and John were really experiencing in that moment. Now, it's just written sort of plain like they saw this and that, but you gotta understand what they were talking about because when you realize that there is a Jewish tradition called the, the Festival of Harvest and that's what they do. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Peter says, we wanna build a shelter for you and we wanna build a shelter for Elijah and we wanna build one for Moses. You know what kind of shelter you're talking about? The Hebrew word for it is Sukkot. S-U-K-K-O-U-T. It's a shelter that they do for seven days. 
festival of harvest goes on and there's a shelter that has three sides and for seven days they live in it but it has no top you know why they want to be able to look up and see the majesty of god that's what peter wanted to build for them that was what he was after we write it as a booth but then when you get back, the Hebrew word really means tabernacle. But you've got to realize that God tabernacles in us. We're the shelter. We're the ones that have to look at it. We are the Sukkot, right? It reminds us that God is tabernacling in us. You see, there's, there's this marvelous spiritual connection and this mindfulness toward the God who cares for us and grants to you and me a life within the transcend world that we live in. And he allows us a kind of mountaintop moment of meditation. You can't get up on that and look across. Even if you climb up on Pinnacle and look east across the river and back toward Little Rock, you can't help but be amazed at all of that. You see, we all can have meditative mountaintop experiences. <laughs> As I read it, I got to thinking, can you imagine what Jesus' disciples were going through in all of this? As you heard it read, I'm sure you think about it. They were having a God encounter through Jesus himself. They were there. They were inviting. They heard God's word. They heard God speak. I don't know about you, but that would get my attention. When you realize this, and there, when you realize they were, the disciples were emerging from an experience not only that changed them, but had already made a difference in the mission that the world that they were going to be involved in. That's what transpired on the Mount of Transfiguration that day. It would be an encounter. And they would, as they traveled along with Jesus through his ministry, you see, the disciples and trainees were getting a new view of what it was all about. Yet, it would take them until the resurrection. Remember, they asked the question, what does it mean? But you see, it took them three years to the resurrection. That they really grasped it and they truly understood that what they had experienced that day with Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration, because encountering God is always takes us far beyond where we ever thought we would be. It gets, it gets it's so overwhelming. And as I listened to the read, read the comments from the astronauts, it literally and truly was indescribable experiences. They tried to describe it. But they couldn't put it into words. You know, you see, we're dealing with something that no words can really explain at all. You know, prayer is like that. We talk about having a prayer meeting. Prayer is like that. So is meditation that you and I have at our homes or wherever we are. It does, it, it, Holy Communion is like that. Worship, where you are right now, is one of those ways of being involved and in being transformed. And it's far beyond us. You realize, we think about it, what transpires with us, John Wesley wrote about it. He wrote about it, these are vehicles of grace. How you're going, through prayer, through communion, through worship. Those are means of grace. Meditation, through faith that you and I have. You know, through all of this, you and I have the ability to connect with God on a relational and a spirit driven trip together. The kind of offering relationship that we have in our life. You know, an encounter with God's grace that has the ability to transform us from the inside out. And that's the marvelous about it. Yeah, you and I can go on diets and we can change what we look like from the outside, but it takes God and our faith in God to turn us inside and change us around. Following Jesus is not a simple, it's an intellectual or even a 
rational path that you and I walk. You know, we can't spend time learning about Jesus and his life and, 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 and teaching. You can do that when we have the Bible study come Wednesday. All right? We spend time doing that. Uh, we can appreciate the acumen of, of Jesus having the mercy in his stories and his sacrificial gift. We grasp that. But until you and I allow Jesus into our hearts, in a transforming kind of way. You and I are not experiencing the kind of transformation shift in our preparation and in our perspective of what Jesus is all about until we serve in a life altering moment. You ever had one? John Wesley did. You know, May the 24th, we will celebrate his experience. John Wesley, founder of Methodism, thought he had religion and faith. Until that day, he was walking on Aldersgate on his way to a service. Here he was, a social advocate. He was also a sincere loyalist to God. He was a, a, a disciplined disciple. He was also a professor, Oxford professor of theology. But until his encounter on Aldersgate, in which he writes and tells us, my heart was strangely warm. God knows. And his spirit was touched by God that day in an emotional and spiritual way that John had never had before. His faith remained an intellectual endeavor, oh, but it was only after his spiritual awakening did the movement called Methodism come about. Did you know that? You don't know how you are. But don't you love a good adrenaline rush? Ever had those? If you ever run and your adrenaline builds up and you are able to do things. I can remember playing ball and looking for the first, I, I wanted to get the kick off and get hit first because that got the adrenaline flowing and all of this. We cherish these lovely, good feeling hormones that you and I have to get us from whatever we're doing. It, it even occurs when you fall in love. Did you know that? But there are nothing. None of these things that we have happen to us. All the adrenaline rushes we want, all the falling in love we have, the life changing God encounter with our divine creator is far beyond that. So today, and as we're closing, I invite us to step outside of our comfort zone, to open our hearts and open our minds and into a new way to pray with a truly repentive heart and to engage in whatever means of grace that might be there. When we connect with God, in an intimate and powerful, transcendent way today. And then I want us to pray this prayer. I want us to ask God to move us, to change us, as God will. And that prayer is more powerful than you and I think. We pray that prayer. And to pray that prayer, takes courage folks you got to be ready to go the reason i wrote this morning have a strong and courageous sunday because it means for us to move it and if we have that courage then i will guarantee all of us if we allow god god's will it will transform our lives it will transform our perspective and it will absolutely transform our world <laughs> Will you pray that prayer? God, man.
your will. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our hymn singing and sending us forth is 369, Blessed Assurance. Verses 1 and 3. Please stand as you are able. Amen. Amen. Turn to all those around you and say, I love you. And there isn't anything to do about it.